Thank you very much. It is very, very good to be here uh, today. And uh, I would like to, first of all, thank uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, Professor Oluato Ogudipe, the Principal Officers of the University and Faculty of Pharmacy, the Chairman of the Occasion, Pharmacist Bruno Wakwa, members of the Darosha Afodu family, here present, the donor represent, donor's representative, Emeritus Professor Darosha Afodu, members of the planning committees, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here today. I wish I could be there physically, but uh, internet uh, Zoom has made things possible. I would like to start by recognizing uh, the origin of this Ladipo Mubolaji Abisogun Afodu Memorial Lecture, which is an outcome of bequeathed endowment from the estate of Mrs. Abimbola Aina Omololu Mulele to University of Lagos in honor of her late father, Mubolaji Abisogun Afodu and her commitment to advance the frontiers of knowledge in pharmacy. It was mentioned that this would be the first endowment from, a, from an individual or from a family. And my, when I read about it, I was very, very pleased because that is the way to drive science or art in any country by us getting out of our comfort zone in terms of where our money goes and donating to research institutions, universities, institutes, and so on. So I want to thank again the family of Darosha Afodu for making this happen. I feel humbled uh, to be invited for this lecture. I will just go briefly uh, through the outline uh, introduction, of course, pharmaceutical industry regulation, product registration, common technical documents, drug evaluation, pharmaceutical research and training facilities, pharmacovigilance, post-marketing surveillance, advances in pharmaceutical practice or pharmacy practice. And I will end up with conclusions. I may not follow my slides as such uh, because thoughts come out that will make this lecture even more meaningful. The pharmacist is a unique professional with diverse knowledge and skills with regard to medication and related health products. In terms of uh, career services of delivery of pharmaceutical services, the pharmacist can find himself in the hospital, in clinics, in community practice settings, in the university, or community pharmacies as clinical pharmacists. Of course, in academia, the pharmaceutical industry and the government, especially uh, regulatory. So as we can see, pharmacy practice cut across many spheres of the society and plays significant role in healthcare delivery. However, it is a highly regulated profession, very dynamic practice, ever evolving, and subject to disruptions and innovations. Disruptions in a positive manner, whether it is in drug utilization and medication safety, antibiotic stewardship, drug misuse and abuse under that, monitoring of substandard and falsified medicines using state-of-the-art uh, technologies, 3D printing formulation de development, which is coming our way. It has been there for now about 10 years. Uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, augmented reality and virtual reality. I'm going to be dwelling on this later, just to let us know that as a profession, we are subjected, just like any other profession, to innovations and disruptions. In terms of the pharmaceutical industry, I would just want to give us a brief history of, uh, of 
just very brief history <laughs> of the pharmaceutical industry of Nigeria. The pharmacy practice in the industry starts, started with pharmaceutical importation of products, not with manufacturing. And the key in, uh, manufacturers include Bicham, May and Baker, Pfizer, Glaxo, J.I. Morrison. These were the set, uh, the first set of companies to enter the Nigerian market uh, pre-independence. For example, May and Baker got into Nigeria in 1944, and uh, Glaxo and uh, Pfizer followed suit. And these were all involved in importation and marketing of drugs. In the 60s, local manufacturing began, and it involved government agencies, multinationals, and entrepreneurs. That was when the production of pharmaceutical dosage forms with high quality and distribution to medical professionals and patients began in earnest. And this contributed greatly to the growth of the nation. I remembered clearly, uh, very well uh, as a student at the University of uh, Nsuka, Nigeria, at the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, that I had my externship at Bicham. Uh, or Stalin Winthrop, actually, in uh, Ilupeju at that point. And that, I believe, gave me uh, a good, good perspective as to what I should do for the rest of my life. In the 1980s and present, uh, to present rather, there was exponential growth in the industry. However, there were also disruptions in the government that set us back for some time. Uh, 1993, NAVDAC was created by the decree of that year and amended in 1999 and then replaced the Department of Food and Drug Administration at the ministry. Uh, that was the way NAVDAC came, came to be. Uh, there have been some amendments later uh, after 1999, that was 2004. However, the tardy establishment, uh, just a minute please. The tardy establishment of NAVDAC meant that between 1974, when the first food and drug decree was enacted, and 1994, when NAVDAC became operational, no fake drug manufacturer or importer was ever prosecuted for endangering the lives of the citizenry. Uh, just a minute. OK. NAVDAC as a regulatory agency is saddled with the responsibility of regulating pharmaceutical industries, among others, in Nigeria. The agency ensures adherence to global best practices in its regulatory functions. It is responsible for issuing guidelines for drug development processes, licensing, registration, manufacturing, marketing, labeling, products, and enforcing other applicable rules and regulations. I joined NAVDAC in, in 2017, and since that time, we have changed things around. In NAVDAC, we started with quality management system, where, you, where the staff or the average worker would not think of himself or herself, but think of the customer, and also think of the image of the agency. So a lot has been going on, we are currently being audited uh, by WHO Global Benchmarking that we take NAVDAC to a maturity level that can then allow Nigeria to manufacture our own vaccines. So if NAVDAC is strong, the pharmaceutical industry is strong, and the, and the country is better off in terms of innovations and advances in science. Because of the booming industry, pharmaceutical industry, NAVDAC was created and the agency develops different uh, uh, guidelines like I mentioned before and included clinical trials, research, of, uh, of course research and approvals, obtain new and generic drug approvals, obtaining marketing authorization, achieving 
compliance with good manufacturing practices. There, was also a, there is also adherence to regulations and guidelines that enable innovation and also helps companies gain and maintain competitive edge, as well as avoid significant regulatory sanctions. We have been putting a lot in place. One of the things that we have put in place also is what is called five plus five validity, where we encourage importers to migrate to local manufacturing. And we also have the five year exclusivity clause where if you have, you know, if you have something, a new development or innovation, you can be given five year exclusivity uh, to market that product. So long as that product is going to, uh, or the manufacturing or development, we meet the demands of the country. So NABDAC is doing a lot in terms of the regulation and the pharmaceutical industry. 2020, the year of COVID, there are about 165 active local pharmaceutical manufacturing industries in the country. And NABDAC has taken the challenge up, uh, challenge on rather, to make sure that the companies are compliant or to make sure that they know their level of compliance. We had a roadmap, which I'm going to briefly talk about later. The industry is regulated by the agency, of course. The, our goal is to make sure that the products that are coming from the pharmaceutical companies are of high quality, safe, and efficacious, and distributed in a manner that will make sure that what is manufactured is what the patient or the end user is taking in. We have stricter adherence to good manufacturing practices now because of the new paradigm in NAVDAC. The new paradigm is quality, international best practices or standards, just to, for the goal of safeguarding the health of our country. In 2018 and 2019, NAVDAC conducted GMP roadmap, a baseline reassessment inspections in partnership with uh, USAID and USP on the various local pharmaceutical manufacturing industries. The goal, of course, is to determine the GMP compliance levels, as well as establish the suitability or otherwise of their facilities to manufacture pharmaceutical products that are safe, efficacious, and of good quality. Outcomes of this have been tremendous. We have categorized companies into different risk levels, low risk, medium, and high risk. And it, was, it, is, it wasn't punitive what we did. The intent is to ensure that each company knows their compliance level. Uh, if a company is high risk, we will give all the uh, CAPA, the corrective action, preventive actions, what to do. And we give the company time to come a restricted time, not uh, <laughs> indefinite, to improve to medium or to low risk. Uh, we also have seen designed high risk, excuse me, risk-based and phased roadmap, allowing improvement opportunities in a stepwise manner with clearly defined targets at the end of, the, of each phase. We have also seen gradual improvement of companies to migrate to lower risk categories. Unfortunately, we have to shut down few companies that, are not re that were not responsive to the improvement targets. The goal is to ensure that the products that are reaching the patients or the end users are of good quality. I mentioned earlier that if NAMDAC is strong, the pharmaceutical industry is strong. That is part of the reason why we are doing our global benchmarking, uh, the WHO global benchmarking. This global benchmarking involves about 287 indicators meaning requirements that we have to meet. So it is very cathartic what we, are, what we are doing because if you don't have something, you cannot give it to somebody else. So strengthening our regulatory framework, we strengthen the pharmaceutical industry. One of the cardinal aims of the agency is promoting local manufacturing. And the, to, to achieve this, or the goal rather to, for, for this is drug security 
and self-sufficiency in local production of essential medicines. During this beginning of this pandemic, we were kicked in, in the butt. Nigeria was kicked in the butt. The pharmaceutical industry was kicked in the butt because we, we have been over-dependent on importation. The only thing that the local manufacturers have that don't import is water. We import everything. And at the beginning of the pandemic, China couldn't do anything. India shut its door on us, and I don't blame them because they have to take care of their own people first. So the purpose of strengthening NAVDA and the industry is to ensure drug security so that we will not be over-dependent. We will still import, but it is not importing 70% like we are doing now. If we are importing 30%, we will have been so successful uh, as a regulatory agency and as a country. The purpose of having local manufacturing is also to reduce substandard falsified medicines. If a company in Nigeria is falsifying its medicine, we can easily go and shut that company down overnight. It is not as easy if it is coming from outside the country. However, we've already, determined, we've already designed another method of working very closely with our, with our CRI agents in, in uh, China and India. And we went there last year and I read them the Riot Act. The Riot Act is you want to do business with Nigeria, you better make sure your products are of quality. And these CRI agents are the ones that will this, uh, choose labs that will analyze our product before they, are, before they come. And we have been getting tremendous output, positive output from this, because many of substandard falsified medicines, counterfeited medicines, are reported to us at the point of testing in India or China. So it's not just local manufacturers that we are after. We are also after uh, foreign manufacturers, especially from India and China. The goal of promoting local manufacturing is to sustain, is for accessibility or affordability of medicines, of course, to create employment opportunities for our young people and to have consistent flow of internally generated revenue for the government and to empower our citizens economically. As we know now, Nigeria is in a big problem in terms of unemployment, poverty, and whatnot. And the end goal of this is also to reduce poverty and of course increase uh, GDP. So starting with what we are doing in NAVDAQ, strengthening the internal capacity of NAVDAQ, we strengthen the industry and yield all these positive outcomes. In terms of pharmacy practice and regulatory control, the pharmaceutical industry is regulated essentially by two agencies. The Pharmacies Council of Nigeria regulates the practice of pharmacy and training of pharmacists, including development of basic pharmacy curricula for degree programs and mandatory continuing education programs. PCN also regulates all premises where pharmacies practice their profession, including manufacturing facilities, retail outlets, and drug warehouses. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration, NAVDA, regulates all drug products and substances, medical devices, chemicals, detergents, packaged water, and food related, referred to rather as regulated products. NAVDAC inspects the manufacturing premises to ensure that the facilities are compliant as far as GM, G, GMP, good manufacturing practice, uh, is concerned. Now let's look at our profession, the pharmacy practice. The pharmacist or pharmaceutical scientist, as the case may be, is well positioned in development of drug regulations and compiling standard specifications for compliance by manufacturers, importers, and exporters of regulated products. The pharmacist or pharmaceutical scientists must understand GMP compliance within stated timelines. The outcomes will be satisfactory outcomes from facility inspections, which will remain one of the prerequisites of product registration. 
this is where a lot of manufacturers run into problems because we don't we shouldn't we cannot use the standards of nigeria if we want to really play in the global field so to say or regional let's talk of west africa or continental if we want to play in that field we've got to make sure that our products are of quality there's going to be the african free trade agreement that is starting very soon and as a huge country many of the countries in africa will be selling things to us if their quality is better than ours our we will, we, NAVDA will be, excuse me nigeria will be at a disadvantage Therefore, facility inspections that usually we flow into the quality of the product is extremely important to us. We do facility inspections now using risk-based approaches, meaning not all companies are equal, whether it's local or foreign. We may not need to travel there if the products are already being approved their products have been approved by fda canada emea and so on uh, so that is what we mean by risk-based approaches and this will help us to now do the desk review we will still go through their documents and whatnot but it will be desk review okay the pharmacist and the pharmaceutical scientists is the best professional to know the consequences of stop standard and falsified medicines. And I'm going to talk a lot about this because it is something to know the consequences of stop standard and falsified medicines is another thing. To keep that knowledge and compromise. And I'm talking to the house. The agency works closely with the police and the Federal Ministry of Justice to enforce these regulations. The, and the agency also engages in sending alerts of fake medicines as part of waging war against substandard falsified medicines so that the public can make informed choices in the marketplace. Like I mentioned, the agency works with clean reports and inspection analysts, CRIA agents in China and India to ensure the shipment of quality drugs into the country. The pharmacist should be well versed in pharmacovigilance and i'm going to throw the challenge to my colleagues in academia as graduates are not as prepared as they should be coming to work in the regulatory agency in the regulatory agency therefore our curriculum should be even if it is special topics because it, it doesn't have to be uh it doesn't have to be the core uh, of the curriculum or part of the core of the curriculum. It could be uh, special topics, independent study, in order to make sure that the pharmacists coming out of the university are well prepared or as prepared as possible. Knowing that NAVDAC is the center of Nigeria pharmacovigilance, it is extremely important for the pharmacists to understand that bad drug can kill that monitoring of drugs generally must be done in phase four which is the pharmacovigilance post-marketing phase uh, so that any unusual side effects or signals can be detected post uh marketing we now have zonal pharmacovigilance units aside from uh, the Zonal University Teaching Hospital Centers, we have six in the country. And the purpose is to collect information on all adverse drug reactions using the newly launched Med Safety app. That Med Safety app was launched. We launched it about a month plus ago. And the goal is to enter all the observations, you know, clinical outcomes after, you know, as a result of uh, uh drug use in terms of adverse drug reactions into a database and that database will now be sent of course the data will be analyzed and then sent to Uppsala Sweden which is a WHO database center 
uh, and if there are signal detections that were observed, that will be documented. But we are now going further to the smart safety surveillance, what we call 3S, uh, that we are now you know, working on at the continental level, uh, African Union level, that have brought four countries, Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, and South Africa together, especially for the COVID vaccines. And what we are now doing is making sure that we have good working groups. And these working groups include the regulatory agency, NAVDAC in, in our case, include the National Primary Health uh, Agency, and it includes NCDC, in order to make sure that we are all working together. And NAVDAC will be now involved in active pharmacovigilance. We're not going to wait for the reports or the data to come to us. We will follow the data. And part of why we're going to be following the data is because we have now included what is called traceability, track and trace. All manufacturers of vaccines all over the world have been advised to use barcoding so that track and trace, tracking and tracing will be easier. First, to make sure we can do interoperation among ourselves as regulatory agencies and regulatory agency and also work with primary health centers, uh, NCDCs and so on in the different countries. So NAVDAC is this, it has a desk now for track and trace. Our staff have been trained to understand track and tracing or what you call trace traceability. The minister launched it about two months ago uh, in Abuja. So NAVDAC is well prepared or is being prepared, I won't say well prepared, because we are still getting through the training in readiness for the COVID vaccines that will be coming our way the end of first quarter or the beginning of second quarter of 2021. So pharmacovigilance is, has become so important. As we speak, we are restructuring uh, the directorate. We are, in, we are adding more staff. They are got, going through training. Uh, on a daily basis in order to ensure not just COVID vaccines, also non-COVID uh, vaccines or therapeutics, so that we will really know what are these adverse side reactions and how that can either translate into modification of uh, manufacturing or be a guide to the medical practitioners or doctors. The pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists the continued vigilance in monitoring of counterfeit medicines is our primary responsibility because we know the consequence. We know the consequence of bad medicines. After the return to the democratic governance and the political will of the government to support enforcement of pharmacy's law became a little bit better, we now have reduction in level of counterfeiting of medicines from 40% before 2005 to 17% in 2006, and now to less than 10% in 2000, well, I shouldn't say now, less than 10% in 2009. But Nigeria went back in 2011 to 2018, NAVDAC was removed from the ports. So, so Nigeria became the haven of cabals. Nigeria became the haven of substandards for falsified medicines, of narcotics. So the 10% in 2009 may not be 10% now. That is what NAVDAC is working on as we speak. So when I joined the agency in 2017, I know that I've gotten my work cut out for me. Because in 2018, Tramadol was rained on Nigeria. Families became ruptured. Our, star, our young children started getting mad because of trauma. Though. But because in 2018, in fact, my first quarter of one and a half quarters into the job, it was like I was working, you know, running after trauma, though, abuse of drugs. I never knew that before I came. So I told the government, 
You say you have drug abuse and NAVDAC is not at the ports? What do you expect? We were fortunate to be returned to the port in 2018. But the damage that was done in seven years cannot be corrected overnight. But we are doing almost every day monitoring of substandard falsified medicines. Our enforcement goes after bad companies manufacturing medicines illegally or bringing drugs in from outside the country. We have a problem in Nigeria as a pharmacy, as, as, as a, as a pharmacy pro, 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 profession. We let our pharmacy practice or our profession turn to trading. So we have more traders than pharmacists. And what does that have, what does that mean? The trader will go, the trader that is not even a scientist, we go to China and India and said, okay, put this level of drug into it. And I'm going to challenge our, our colleagues, the pharmacies that are supposed to be there. Sometimes the pharmacies will look or the other way. And we have, been, we have sent letters to PSN and PCN. Any superintendent pharmacist that is representing a company should be held responsible for any substandard falsification or counterfeiting that that company does. Because this is our profession. It doesn't matter whether it's a trading group that has the company, the pharmacist is responsible for, make, for make, making sure that the product has quality. We have also been successful through collaboration with customs. So the pharmacist and the pharmaceutical scientist must continually be vigilant in monitoring substandard falsified medicines. We don't have a choice. It is our call. That was part of our oath of the pharmacy. The role of pharmacists in site license and product registration. The pharmacists have the knowledge or should have knowledge of chemistry, pharmacology, formulation of drugs, and also have continued lifelong, lifelong learning perspective. Because what we learned at the first degree level is not the same thing that you should know 20, 10 years, 20 years after. So continuing lifelong learning, extremely important. The PCN issues the site license. And of course, the NAVDAC uh, does others, and I'm going to go through it. For site license, the pharmaceutical manufacturing premise must be registered with PCN. And there must be a pharmacist associated, a, a board certified pharmacist associated or employed rather with that company. A superintendent pharmacist that is duly registered with PCN must be a staff of the company. In terms of pre-production, that is after site license, pre-production registration, NAVDAC must know that this company can actually do what they think, what they stated in the application for pre-production. So NAVDA carries out the pre-production inspection. And things have become more stringent and tight now because we don't have a choice but to, but to use global best practices. In terms of product registration, the pharmacist plays a crucial role because the agency now deploys electronic platform, the NAVDA Automated Product Administration and Monitoring, monitoring Systems, NAPAMS, that enables customers' input that enables customer to input all product details electronically for application processing. And this is where the lifelong learning experience comes in. When we were going through schools, we didn't even have computers. We used to use log table. Uh, later it went to slide room and then it went to, you know, uh, self, what do you call it? Uh, calculators. But now, the science has advanced, and that is part of the reason why NAVDAC is going digital. We are going di digital in so many areas, in registration, in port inspection, in chemical drug evaluation, 
in veterinary medical I mean, medical products eva uh, evaluation or research. So lifelong learning is extremely important. And again, that is another challenge to the academia. Do we have special topics for our students in computer engineering faculty? It doesn't have to be pharmacy alone. Our students can take special courses or independent stud uh, uh, studies or courses rather in other faculty in order to become well prepared for the job market. And this brings me now to pharmacy practice and research. The basic professional training of pharmacists in Nigeria is of great importance. And this is regulated by Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, which accredits pharmacy training schools. However, that is basic. After that is the postgraduate training of pharmacists to become pharmaceutical scientists. Very essential for local manufacturing of genetic medicines. Again, our universities, faculty of pharmacy, must know what the industry needs and tailor the curriculum to fit it. As a professor, I believe in experiential learning. Hardly will you, I don't think there's any of my graduate students that didn't go to the pharmaceutical industry, either for two weeks, for three weeks, or for summer, for summer during the summer, for three months. To have an experience of what it takes to develop products. So that would be a challenge. And NAVDAC is actually open for short term studies with co collaboration with universities. Right now, we, we have five students at the University of Technology in MENA doing food science research or masters and PhD programs, rather. Extremely important that the university make sure that the graduates are relevant or the graduates are pointed to where they, they will be relevant. My experience installing Winthrop in Ilupe, you prepared me of refocused me to know that I'm going to be a research scientist. I want to work, you know, doing thing, one thing or the other as far as drug development is concerned. So NAVDAC is open for, for experiential learning of the different aspects of regulatory science. And uh, we now have, or we are building uh, our database of uh, equipment, state-of-the-art equipment. Because when I joined NAVDAC in 2017, about 80% of the equipment were not working. And since that time, we have added a lot of equipment. The government supported us in some, uh, especially the one for uh, Office of Peace, uh, for what do you call it, uh, uh, OPCW, which is uh, chemical weapons, uh, or preventing chemical weapons, so to say. So we have a set of equipment for that. And the good thing about it is when you have a GCFID or whatever, you can also use it for drug or food research. But aside from that, we have become very prudent in NAVDA. We paid our debts that are inherited and became prudent so that we can have money to buy this equipment. We can have money to buy vehicles, which we didn't have before. So, like I say, our doors are open in terms of collaboration. The University of Lagos School of Pharmacy uh, is a good example in, in terms of collaboration. They do this with manufacturers in areas of quality control and stability studies. NAVDAC is collaborating with uh, the Drug and Harbor Medicine Development and Regulation, or in, sorry, in Drug and Harbor Medicine Development and Regulations uh, through the African Center of Excellence and Drug Research, Harbor Medicine Development Regulatory Science. And when I was discussing with uh, Dr. Ademi Lua, and I mentioned that, you know, if, you if, a, if there's a project that can be collaboratively, collaboratively done with NAVDAC, our labs are open. Unlike university equipment, and I'm talking from experience now, as a regulatory agency, 
we have to qualify our equipment. That is part of our re-accreditation every year. So we just don't use equipment anyhow, at least now. We have to make sure that they are ISO compliant. NAVDAC became ISO 9001 compliant June of last year. And if you are ISO compliant, your equipment must be compliant. The equipment of 20 years ago, 15 years ago, may not be ISO compliant. So we are accumulating as we speak ISO compliant equipment pieces in all our labs, the seven labs in the country. In terms of university postgraduate training of pharmacists, very, very important. I cannot, I cannot say too much about that. That is my own passion. This is important for drug development, uh, including clinical trials, of course. I was lucky to be part to, to, to work with colleagues in the, at the University of Lagos, Professor Iguilo, Professor Silva, on a project uh, that included clinical trials. It's tough in Nigeria to do clinical trials, or it was tough that time. But I went through that process so that I would be well prepared to know what the average researcher goes through. Because we did the pilot study at the University of Lagos. And then I went and then applied, of course, submitted my application to FDA in, Lago, in, uh, in the US for new products that I developed from my lab. And then I had to do that with, the, with Baptist uh, Bowen University teaching hospital in Nogomosho. And I went through what we call hell to do clinical trials in Nigeria at that point. What took FDA three months to approve took me three and a half years because at that point, NABDA can end rec the national uh, health research uh, that is com committee rather that is based at the Ministry of Health. They weren't talking. So a clinical trial scientist may not even know what to do. Finally, I got approved for to 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 go go on with the clinical trial, and because of that, I'm very very passionate about clinical trial and the way we present it to the public, and we have improved a lot. We are still improving. We've held a lot of a, a series of uh, uh, seminars with investigators, with other medicine practitioners. We have guidances on how to navigate our system. And this is an essential part of our own regulation. Uh, so postgraduate training is very, very important in all these areas. We, have, we of course, have established research parastatals with federal mandates in different ministries. National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development, NIPRI, is one of them. NIMA is one of them. Uh, these institutions are involved in several research activities and represent various scientific interests. These are the types of places that faculty of pharmacy can send their students to. But you have to know who you're going to work with because the fact, the fact that you have NIPRID or NIMA doesn't mean automatically you can just ask a student to go there. You have to have build a relationship with one, one or two people there to know their areas of research and whether the supervisor at the university can work together uh, with the respective scientists in these institutes. The pharmacist is extremely important in control of counterfeit substandard and falsified medicines because by training, we understand better the health outcomes. However, corruption and lack of access to quality, affordable, essential medicines have contributed to illegal trade in substandard and falsified medicines. I mentioned this earlier. But we are mopping, we are mopping the mess as we speak. We are procuring what is called true scan. The true scan is a medical device, a, a detection device that you can use for on the spot checking of falsified medicines. Before my time, NAVDAC had six units, very, very costly. 
as costly one is as costly as hplc they had six and they recorded tremendous outcomes positive outcomes in terms of identifying counterfeited products now we are procuring as we speak we are procuring more true scan that each zone will have so that we can detect substandard falsified medicines all these things are very costly to do you have to have vehicles you cannot take kokada to go and monitor or do surveillance of uh, drugs or food so now NABDAC is getting better positioned but this is a real challenge counterfeited substandard medicine is a, there is a big challenge to manufacturers of genuine medicines because the counterfeiters or manufacturers of substandard medicines will sell cheaper and the local manufacturers that want to add 100 percent content will be pushed out of the market that is why the local manufacturers as far as i'm concerned they are heroes they are not there yet but they are heroes because they go through a lot in order to get a product out it is also a challenge to NABDAC. So we have active regulatory activity from product re registration to GMP to quality control to port inspection and to enforcement. We have active pharmacovigilance now, a risk based, risk based pharmacovigilance, meaning that all the drugs that we are registering, some of them will be categorized as high risk. Some of them will be categorized as, or may be categorized as low risk or medium risk, depending on the history. Then we go after them. So we want to be sure that the product that was registered is still the same product five years down the line, 10 years down the line. So we're now going to be doing more post-marketing survey than we were doing before. NAVDAC is now using cutting edge technology to monitor. I've mentioned that before. The mobile authentication service is one of them. True scan is one of them. And track and trace technology is a high technologically driven uh, process. But the goal is to ensure that we have a sane supply chain. Because right now, our supply chain is chaotic. But with what we are doing in NABDAC, we're going to bring that into focus and improve on that tremendously. We are using that, by the way, for the COVID vaccine that will be coming our way. And we are, with that, um, we are now working with uh, National Primary Health, NCDC, Ministry of Health, uh, UNICEF, Gavi, to ensure that the product is tracked, is traced, and is linked with pharmacovigilance. Still talking about uh, substandard falsified medicines, I mentioned that the pharmacists understand better and to whom more, much is given, much is expected. There are some advances in NABDAC's regulation and the pharma industry towards curtailing this. I mentioned them first, you know, do, do, doing the uh, five plus five validity that en ensures that uh, importer will migrate. Now we are doing active control on APIs or active pharmaceutical ingredients that are being imported. The active pharmaceutical ingredient, the quality of it is extremely important. The product is as good as the starting material, as the drug in it. So we now do a lot of control on APIs because you go to China, you go to India, they will say, do you want 30 dollars per kilo or you want 120 dollars per kilo you can figure out 30 dollars per kilo we never amount to anything and will harm our people we cause adverse events even if they are even the drugs at all so we have a very stringent approach now to uh apis in terms of control Reduction in number of registered imported products, I've mentioned that with the five plus five uh, validity. Pre-shipment analysis, I've mentioned that. And enforcement of importation 
of only quality medicines and other regulated products into our country. NAPDAC used to test thousands and thousands of products every year. And before I came, it was like magic. How can you try, you know, with limited facilities? But even with our improved facilities now, part of our global benchmarking that WHO is conducting, auditing us for, is to make sure that we use risk-based laboratory testing approach. Meaning that if a product is coming from stringent regulatory uh, agency or approved by stringent regulatory agency, you don't have to test that product every time. But if you know that this pro product, uh, the manufacturer has been accused of this, accused of that compromise, you go after their product to ensure that that has not been translated into poor quality. I mentioned risk-based post-marketing. I will now have sustained public enlightenment. We are still getting better on that. Uh, enlightenment on substandard falsified medicines. We now collaborate better with PCN, uh, which was, you know, they were, now Black and PCN were at us before, because we, the two agencies, function to safeguard the health of our country, of our population. So collaboration extremely important. Alignment with best, with global best practices with respect to product in terms of dosier submission and product registration. We have now enforced common technical documents, use of common technical document. It is the least that can be done, but we were going to do it before 2012 or so, and then NAVDAC for, you know, didn't enforce it. Now we're enforcing it because the common technical documents need the knowledge of chemistry, biology, pharmaceutics, toxicology, uh, uh, biochemistry, and whatnot under pharmacy or related uh, uh, prof uh, courses in order to put that package together with, with sound knowledge. Facility GMP, extremely important. The knowledge of all these uh, science areas, very important. And also product development, management, and planning. Capacity building, very, very important. And skills building. It's not just uh, knowing chemistry and biology and whatnot. It's, it's also ability to have soft skills. Soft skills are skills that can take you more than just your head knowledge of different courses. Soft skills will help you in terms of emotional intelligence, working with other people, being a team player. All this we are emphasizing to our staff. In terms of advances, again, drug utilization and medication safety, extremely important. Antibiotic stewardship, drug misuse and abuse, monitoring of substandard falsified medicines, development of biosimilars, monoclonal antibodies, vaccine development using cutting edge technology. I believe we're going to be there as a country. The government has to back us up and the philanthropists have to also back us up. That's why I'm so happy uh, that I'm privileged to deliver this lecture. Advances include Internet of Things. We are using Internet of Things now to, to, to meet together using augmented reality or virtual reality. I'm not, I'm, I'm not at the University of Lagos, but I'm there. That is augmented reality, virtual reality. 3D printing formulation development, extremely important. This will be used or can be used at the community practice level or at the industry level. Machine learning, artificial intelligence, extremely important. I will go into this just in a few seconds. Uh, COVID brought us a surprise uh, and exposed us to our vulnerability. It highlighted the fact that we were over-dependent, I mentioned that, and underscored the need to mod modernize pharmaceutical manufacturing. Machine learning, artificial intelligence that I've gone through. Now Nigeria is paying attention to the neglected health sectors. 
pharmaceutical companies now are, are being given COVID intervention fund to improve their infrastructure and their quality management. The government has also sent requests for proposals which closed about a month ago for herbal medicines, vaccine development, and other therapeutics and medical devices. This is extremely important. The government has to back science. Philanthropists have to back science in order to move science forward, especially in the areas of vaccine. Uh, and uh, talking of vaccines, if NAVDA doesn't get to that maturity level three, there are four levels. If we don't get to that level three, Nigeria can never manufacture vaccine. So whatever we are doing in NAVDA, we're not just doing it because we are civil servants or whatever. No, we are doing it for the health of our people, for the image of the country. And the pharmacist plays a key role in that. Talking of artificial intelligence in the healthcare industry, conducting repetitive tasks such as data entry, lab test analysis, data management, artificial intelligence is very important. In NAVDAC, we use the laboratory information management system and we are integrating all our labs in the country so that whatever you see in Lagos, you can see it in Meduguri. You can use artificial intelligence for analysis of healthcare system, identification of medication errors, or inefficiencies in management and medical consultations. Organ on chips is another advance, advancement that can be used to transform the other industries like med media, retail, banking, telecom, education, and so on. For machine learning, it can be used for disease, disease identification, diagnosis, radiology, radiotherapy planning, clinical trial research, personalized medicines, rare disease identification, and so on. AI and ML, machine learning, are expected to be integrated into most, if not all, pharmaceutical R&D operations. In turn, this should improve the drug development and success rate and streamline R&D. And for R&D in Nigeria, we've got to do something as quickly as possible. There is no single company in Nigeria, pharmaceutical industry, that does R&D. No single company. And that is where academia comes in. Academia can join, collaborate with a company. That is, if the company is made to know that you may be focusing on production, but you can fund academia so that they will do your R&D for you. It's not regulatory. It is research and development, you know. So this is where artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on can be integrated. AI can actually identify the subset of patients who will benefit from a particular drug, personalized medicine. That is where artificial intelligence can also be brought in. This could reduce the failure rate substantially and ensure successful and quick launch. Oh, sorry. In conclusion, pharmacy practice is extremely important to the attainment of drug security and supply of quality and affordable essential medicines for Nigerians, for ECOWAS sub-region, and for the continent. And I would also add globally, if NAVDA gets to level four, our pharmaceutical companies can trade anywhere in the world. That is how important the role of the pharmacist is or pharmaceutical scientists in academia, pharmaceutical industry, government regulatory science, the pharmacists are needed postgraduate uh, training. Local manufacturing and improvements in essential medicines and self-sufficiency, very, very important, I've mentioned that. Regulatory controls on importation to boost local manufacturing capacity and make us more proud as a country and advances in pharmaceutical regulatory sciences, some of which I've mentioned, will be drivers to the pharmaceutical industry. With that, I want to say thank you for listening and God bless. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs>
if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. If there are no questions, I didn't hear the last speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor Oluwatoye Rubinibwe, every represented by our DVC, Professor Oluwale Fabuloni, the PLT Chair, and of course the DVC here now, Professor Oluwale Fabuloni. Chairman of this occasion, so I hope you're still online. From Bruno Wanko, our guest speaker, my sister, I believe she's still online, Professor Ruji Adelia, the teacher of Nata. Our special guest of honor, Mommy, Kikev Sumono, and Daddy, my you are the same thing years ago. The same way you used to talk to us in house. The same way you have just spoken to us today. The Lord will continue to strengthen you. Our registrar, Mr. Oladen Jomasis, the Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy, uh, beloved Professor Gloria Jai, our elder, and Chairman of Government Council, Kenneth University, Professor Paula Tayo. So you're welcome. I think you are going to be kicking, you talk your life. You repeat us openly. I think open review is better than secret law. Uh, the representative of our donor, we sincerely appreciate them. I don't know if the emeritus professor that's it, that Rocha food is here now. We sincerely appreciate that family. Director of Office and for Advancement, uh, Mr. ABC Dairo. College Secretary, Mr. Bafemi Moses. Professor Mababola, I saw her sometime, I don't know if she's still there. The Dean of Faculty of Clinical Sciences, Professor DME. Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Professor Schofer, and all our past days, beginning with, I think, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, Professor Mendia, Professor Kelly Dukoya, Professor Silva, Professor Aino, I, I don't know if I'm leaving out any of our that are present here with us, and uh, our distinguished colleagues, students, ladies, and gentlemen. We sincerely thank God for the opportunity to stand before you to uh, give this uh, report on the second Reset Grant Award. The first Reset Grant Award was given last year, 2019. We thank God for the year 2020, the year when the whole world locked down. We took a break. The Lord gave us a break. Sabbatical break, compulsory break, year of hope. That's what we target in our church. Year of hope. Your hope must come alive so that you don't give up. We bless God for seeing us through. We're already in December. And as I have been prophesied, 2021 will be better in Jesus' name. And we thank God for our board of trustees that mandated us to go ahead despite the lockdown. If you are just at ease, a little bit of ease, they said we should go ahead to get the advert out. The committee started work in September to choose the research team. And the team that we came up with after a long discussion, both by Zoom and physical meetings, was pharmaceutical interventions during a pandemic. What a suitable topic for our period. The advertisement was widely circulated 
from 2nd of October to 30th November. At the close of work on 30th of November, we had three submissions. One was from National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development in Abuja. One was from the uh, Department of Pharmaceutics and Pharmtech, my own department. And the third one was from the Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Biopharmacy in the University of Lagos. The committee met on the 30th of November and 1st of December, and they came up with a winner. I will take a little break here because the Office of Advancement said I should make an appeal for our indigent students. We are appealing to all philanthropists, all good people of this nation, both here present and online, to please partner with the Office of Advancement. There are some of our children and students, the parents just have enough to get them to the university, and that is all. No maintenance, nothing, and nothing, and nothing. So the Lord will strengthen you as we come up to partner with the Office of Advancement to look after the indigent students of the University of Lagos. Now, having made that announcement, I have the singular honor to announce the winner to this house. The title of our proposal was uh, Pharmaceutical Interventions Provided by Community Pharmacists During COVID-19 Pandemic, a case study of Lagos State, Nigeria. So, so this is the I know. We have the pleasure of announcing the winner for the second. Let me go. For that, let me go. Really, I put you. I Top of one point four billion naira for the aid and research, and we hope that we will be with the advancement of policy in Nigeria and the global Congratulations. <laughs> So the committee for the food so the have to work on that very important position of tight planning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.